Hi, I'm Angela Greenick. Welcome to my program today, Training to Rain. I am so honored and excited. I'm in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, with this amazing superhero of the faith, Leanne. And we are here at your ministries. It's the Catholic Church, FYI. God says, everybody's coming in to swim. Everybody's coming in because I'm going to tell you what, body of Christ, as the oil dripped of Aaron, he said the whole body is coming into kingdom alignment right mm -hmm. now. And I'm going to tell you what, we need what you carry. We Praise need God. one another. So we just bless this program. I know it's going to rock your socks. Some of you are going to get real rock. Hallelujah. And others will just go do five Hail Marys and call it a flipping day. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Seriously. And so I want to welcome you today, Leanne. You. So share what you're doing here. She has an amazing ministry. I have a ministry that uh, uh, the Lord called uh, about 33 years ago. Mm. Drove my house, uh, our home, up to um, those who have no place to go. Yes. And it's like we thought in the beginning it was going to be just for women. Yeah. And uh, the Lord showed me, no, it, it's for, it ended up being university students coming <laughs> and other men and yeah. women discerning their call to the priesthood wow. and to the convent. And uh, mm. uh, we've had a lot of success from that. Mm. We, uh, we call it the Father's House. It's yeah. Hard to Heart Ministries, but the Father's House because the Heavenly Father actually resides here and is with us. Oh, yes. And that's what they feel. Oh, yes. Um, I, I had a, a vision one time of um, John Boy from Mountain from the uh, Walton's Walton's Mountain oh, from Longo. Oh, I'm all about the Waltons. <laughs> and I was wondering because I was in prayer and uh, doing the rosary, yeah. and I thought, why am I thinking of John Boy? Mm -hmm. And then, and then all of a sudden, it came to the Baldwin sisters, mm -hmm. and I thought, what am I thinking about them? And then I remembered in, on that show that yeah. they gave moonshine to people yeah. that came. Yes, they and did. And then the Lord said to me, and you'll be given a different wine. Come and that wine on. will be the, the Father's, Father's recipe, recipe, which ha! is a different wine the Father's love. Come on. And, and, mostly, and they were odd. Yes, they were. And we're odd. <laughs> <laughs> well, who, introduce who you have here today, uh, please. Dan Devine. He's, he's our music ministry, and he does everything else. Yeah. All the technical mm -hmm. stuff. And Kathleen mm -hmm. uh, White, and she's mm -hmm. um, my partner. Um, I'm the foundress. She's the co-foundress. And uh, she's got the gift of hospitality and the hostess with the mostest. Yes, she is. <laughs> you know what? I'm so honored to have you here, and um, I'm honored to be here. You know, there's something happening in 2016, and, and we just came out of that Azusa now, Azusa time again, and we're mm -hmm. coming in now to the mm -hmm. Passover, and... I feel like God is saying to the church land, He doesn't want to pass up. He doesn't want to pass over anymore. Yeah. Like all all nations all around the world are in trouble. Pakistan just had another earthquake, Indian explosion. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, we are in perilous times. Yes. And regardless of what people may say or think, I I keep hearing from God the Father. If my people who are called by my name. At the second chronicles would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from judgment, yes. turn from the wickedness, mm -hmm. unforgiveness, turn their hearts back mm -hmm. to the Father. Mm -hmm. That's what I love about what yes. we're doing. So I'm going to take a few minutes, share what we're doing here, share why I'm here. Well, the reason uh, Angela's here is because we're in a lot of spiritual problems. Like I've been in ministry for over 30 years, yeah. but it seems like the darkness. It doesn't seem it is. The oh. darkness is really head up. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. all the things that I've been taught, I need it more. Wow. I need to know more how to protect uh, myself, my family, and especially this ministry and Absolutely. the people that come here. Yes. So I called Angela and said, can you help? Can you help? <laughs> can you train us <laughs> yeah. how to uh, intercede and to protect ourselves in spiritual yeah. warfare? And that's yeah. why you're here. And uh, I made it a closed session yeah. for all the people that I knew was 100% for the Lord. Yeah. And uh, we needed help, and you're helping us. Thank you. Well, I'm, you know what is so exciting? Because God is releasing deliverance healing centers yes. all over the world. Mm -hmm. And he is really, listen, we're in a spiritual battle. I don't care if you say, well, I, I'm not in it. Yes, you are. If you're alive and breathing right now, some of you need to be restored in your breathing yes. of the Holy Spirit. Hello. Mm -hmm. But if you were breathing, you would just feel that God is moving. And we have to learn how to protect That's ourselves. Right. And, you know, I do share this, but my Armed and Dangerous, my basic training book, 
Um, that's what I'm training mm-hmm. out of. But I wrote this for the Catholic Church years ago, and it was Warfare Manual 101 back then. And I, I, because I, I would have never written a book in my life, but I knew by the Lord I was to write. And of course, now it's a little different. But we already started training yesterday yes. on demonic spirits. We've had already healings. People are like popping, <laughs> like like <laughs> pop, 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 pop. Like God is like ricocheting in here. And I'll tell you what I love about the Catholics. And I love about the body of Christ as a church is that we just come together and do normal. And a lot of people don't know what that is because sometimes we think it's all about like a protocol. But I always preach this, what you do not honor, you'll never have. Mm -hmm. And the honoring and value of what we carry. And I'm going to take a minute with Kathleen. This She's a trip. That's all I'm going to say. I so love you. You are such an amazing woman. I mean, you got a story behind you. You've been there, done it. But what will compel you to want to open up this kind of a house? I mean, what moved in your heart to have you do this? Um, I did have a dream from the Lord about looking after a whole warehouse of people. Wow. And that he visited me and said, you know, mm-hmm. I knew I was responsible for them, but I re- and I knew I had a room in the Father's house in that yep. dream. And... Uh, I wanted to go to the home, but he said, no, you have more people to look after. Wow. So yeah. I really didn't understand that. But through scripture. Yes. And the one where the the man with the wealth, and he said, what else can I do? Yeah. And he said, mm-hmm. give up all your wealth and whatever you have. Yes. And follow me. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I was obedient. I think that's, the, I don't even think it, it really, Kathleen, it's, that's, the heart of God mm-hmm. is he wants us just to be you know selfless and, and reckless in the love area just to let our hearts just be so reckless to him and so now because I love how you said it she is the hostess with the mostest but yes. um, I mean I'm fasting and this the food the smell is like ay 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 shandu shandaba and um but it really struck me because I watch you as we're doing the meetings and you're a watchman, like you're watching and helping us to forge through because we are in a, in a spiritual battle. Mm-hmm. And so it's a privilege to have you here today. And mm-hmm. I want to talk a minute to Dan. So what's your story, brother? <laughs> well, when yeah. I was five years old, um, I was called to become a Catholic priest. Yes. And ever since then, the devil's been trying to kill me. Come on. <laughs> But he hasn't yet, and he never will. Amen. Because God is God, and Satan's not. Come on! Come on! And the reason that I'm here, I've had yep. kind of a colorful journey, but the reason that I'm here is to discern uh, God's call for me. I, I know that I was a chosen seed yeah. in the womb for priesthood. Yes. And actually, my two younger brothers are as well. Yes. And so my dad's a special man, of course. Yeah. And so uh, and we have our own family story and stuff, but I'm here... I was in a different. I was in a religious community. Yeah. I was a, a friar, yeah. but the Lord called me to do a new thing, kind of like Mother Teresa. She was yeah, in yeah. A, an order. Yes. The Lord said, "I want you to work with the poorest of the poor," and so He called her out. The Lord called mm-hmm. me out, and He called me to this particular region, wow. which needs a lot of love and a lot of help. Yes. And called me here, and Leanne is really my spiritual mother. Yeah. And um, the Lord has done that and really connected us like yeah. by the soul. Oh, yeah. And um, we received a lot of persecution because of that. And there are a lot of misunderstanding from my journey and stuff. Yes, of course. But I don't care because Jesus and was amen. misunderstood too. You know why? Because your haters are your motivators. And it don't matter what nobody thinks because <laughs> when I'm God says about. it, it's on. Yes. And I love that you have this uh, mother and son relationship Mm -hmm. because that's really what God is looking God's looking for the spiritual fathers and mothers Mm -hmm. to step up and step in and I have to say this because we're in Canada and you're from Michigan correct and so you're American so you get what I'm getting ready to say but there's a lot of young people they they feel like they've already arrived or they they've hit that mark you know and I'm Mm -hmm. sure in Catholic Church and Protestant all you know denominations and yet those that are humble and hungry for God, That's right. like I see your generation, this Benjamin generation. Mm-hmm. And before I came here, I kept hearing about Josiah, that they he was found and he brought the book back. He brought the word of God back. And right. the one thing I can tell you when we were in worship, because we had mass last night, which was like off the charts, amazing. And um, But in our worship time, everybody's jumping around and there's like 20,000 
you know, kids jumping around on the dance floor of God. And God kept telling me when we were stomping our feet that he is literally breaking that Amen. old wine skin so that the new wine can be poured Amen. out. That's right. Amen. You know, and it is about the priest Praise, yeah. and it is about the pastors and it is about the prophets and it is about evangelism and, and mm. you know, the ministries of mm. help. It's about all these facets that come together because the bottom line is that we have one common thread between each one of us, and that is God the Father through His Son Jesus, who gave yeah. us Holy Spirit. That's why we're oh, all thank here. You, thank you. Lord. And you know, um, I, I just love this because when you asked me to come, my spirit leaped, and I was like, God, I don't know how John the Baptist's mama must have felt. <laughs> Bam! But something leaped in my spirit. Because I'm like, that's what God is looking for. He's looking for that leaping, you know, that movement in the spirit so that we can get ready. You're in deliverance ministry. Yes, you I have. have been for years. Yes, yes. But now you're going higher. Yes. And you're going further. And thank you for the training. Yes, you're helping me all the way. Well, you, know, you, you know why it's important? Because Leanne's going to have a deliverance healing center here. She really already has one, but now I'm going to help equip her and get her even more so. Because mm -hmm. we have them in other cities, states, and yes. nations. But God said every denomination. Amen. It's not just the Baptists or Assembly of God. It's not just for the Catholic. It's for everyone that has that one common denominator. And I'll tell you, the one thing that you can't tell us apart from is because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's the blood that brought everyone yes. back together. I just want to take a, a quick second here before we shift into this next um, session part. But it's out of Matthew uh, 5, 13, about the salt and the light. And God said, but we must remember that we are the salt of the earth. And if it loses its flavor, how can it become salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be trampled and thrown away. Mm -hmm. And God's word decrees in 14, but you are the light of the world, a city that cannot be hidden. Mm -hmm. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Right. And I honestly feel like, you know, just being here that God is releasing that spotlight of heaven uh -huh. onto this house, but onto this community, Thank you, Jesus. And, but onto the church, Amen. because we all are one in the body of Christ. And it's, um, I'll tell you, when I'm flying in here, I thought I was going to a different nation. The warfare is like off the charts. Yeah. I mean, my God, I feel like I'm in Disneyland with the demons because right across the way, this place is flipping, rocking, demonic. And yet, there's already shifts in the spirit realm. I loved, I came here and, you know, my people are like, well, what are, where are you going and stuff? I go, oh, they, they already spiritual map. They go, they did. I'm like, yeah. I mean, what planet are you people from? Of course they did. Because if they have made it this long, it, listen, if you don't know what you're battling with, you better find out. Amen. You know, Amen. because when you're in a spiritual battle, no general goes into any battle without knowing his enemy. And you need equipment. Yeah, we you need have to, to be, be equipped. equipped. Yeah. Right. And then that's the what right you've done weapons. for us. Yeah. Yes, you bring it does. the weapons that we mm -hmm. needed. So mm -hmm. I want to shift this for a second because uh, when I, when she had mentioned your name, she said, Danny. The Holy Spirit, I said to Larry, I go, Larry, I don't know what this means, but this guy's like, he's like a Franciscan monk or something. I see him in a robe and a rope around this stuff. I don't know. And then I get here and I'm like, I know you don't know me, but, and I said, well, you're going to be a priest, right? And he's like, I said, God's called you by Father Daniel. And mm -hmm. you're like, I'm good. I'm in the priesthood. Right, you're oh, well, I'm on the you're I'm, I'm on the track. Like yeah, I haven't yeah. actually received ordination. Yeah, but you but will. I believe the Lord calls me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll priest. be there. And yeah. actually, that's scriptural. Yes, it you is. You know, it says uh, I believe it's in the Psalms. You are a priest forever. Yeah. In the order of Melchizedek. Yeah, come on. So if you're a chosen seed from the womb, like even yeah. we believe. St. Faustina, it's a year of mercy in the Catholic Church. It is a year of mercy, uh, yes. St. Faustina received that they're chosen souls, and they're yeah. chosen from the womb, mm -hmm. from conception, as yeah. a chosen seed. And God sees them mm -hmm. as a priest or mm -hmm. a sister or a prophet, for yeah, example, yeah, yeah. from the very instant of yeah. their conception. Yeah. That's who he calls yeah. me. Yeah. Now, a lot of people get freaked out by that because like, I'm not actually sacramentally ordained yet. But, you but that's my identity. It's not my job. No. Like, it's not your job that you're a prophet, no. deliverance minister. That's no. part of who you are. Yeah. And if it's not, you're going to get taken out. Exactly. You know, a lot of people try to uh, incorporate something mm -hmm. that's not actually part of them. Or they yeah. try to appropriate a calling. Yeah. 
or steal a, on a mantle or come a mantle. Come on, but you come can't do on, that. Come on. You, you have to do what you're you're born yes. of God. So yeah. you're born of God to do something. Yeah. And we each represent Jesus in a different way. Yes. And my representation of Jesus is his high priesthood. Yeah. You know, and I, and I uh, have that anointing. Praise God. Amen. That. You know what I love about Melchizedek is that it's that priestly prophetic anointing. Amen. <laughs> and, you know, for years we've cried out for that. You know, many, many prophetic voices mm-hmm. all over the world <laughs> have cried out for that because that's what God's looking for. That's right. You know, God's just looking for those that would humble themselves and pray and and not get caught up in all the competition and all the weirdness. But to about. really, I, I just feel like he just wants you to fall in love with him, yes. you know? Amen. And when you become a lover of Christ, nothing matters. That's you know, right. you don't care. It's not that we don't care about, you know, people and their feelings, not really. <laughs> Just being honest. Um, it's something I don't care about people. I love people. But I know that our next three years are critical in the body of Christ. Like mm. God is going boots to the ground. Boots to the ground. Yeah. We are taking off right now. Boots to the ground. And I loved in Mass last night that Father Bob had spoke on. And he was telling us, you know, um, about in Israel where the tomb and everything is starting to collapse and it's the Catholic Church and the Protestant mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. another mm-hmm. ministry. I mean, Orthodox. The, Orthodox. Yeah. So there's something that's collapsing and yet we have other people that are helping to come in and finance it to get it rebuilt up. Mm-hmm. And I thought, and I felt like, because that was yesterday mm-hmm. and we got in and we began yesterday and the Lord said, see, I told you. Say, I told you that you're on target. Yes. We're on target, Leanne. Yes. We really are. Yes. I say, I'm talking to us now. God said, we're on target yes. because we are going in yes. and we're all holding up the arms of Moses, whoever that may be. It was a Father Bob or you or myself, whoever we are, but we are lifting one another up and we are helping mm. each other to get through the battles right. of life. And it's easy to throw stones. I mean, let's get real. But it's a different thing when you really start to love people. And they get mean or angry or say horrible things, you know. And I just, I don't know. I'm just really blessed. I just look through the eyes of love. Mm -hmm. And I just think, wow, Lord, if this program touches one person today, Mm -hmm. it's already touched me. But if it touches one person Mm -hmm. to the whole world, you may be one person. But to one person, you just might be the whole wide world. And I see um, this ministry building like real quick now, like I I saw a time lapse and the time lapse is really moving for you and God's opening up Mm -hmm. uncommon doors. He said, she has such uncommon favor, but you have an uncommon ground for uncommon seed because I see men of God, women of God coming here Mm -hmm. to really get healed and restored. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people forget, you know, any leader in any denomination gets exhausted after a while you know and everyone needs that refreshing and and to have that peace that surpasses all understanding Mm. and so I know you're going to be blessed but Leanne's going to have a channel and Larry says what do you think she'll call it I go I don't know maybe the Catholic Review or something (laughs) but I'm very excited because I'm going to tell you what God is going for everyone and he wants everyone into the kingdom now I am not your typical person I I had to come to grips with that a long time ago when I first got started I would just go under a table and cry because I was so weird but then I come across other weirdies like myself, and I'm like, there is nothing wrong with us. No, no. No. I mean, nothing. No. <laughs> it's just that when you're Amen. a forerunner and you're forging in a battle, God says, and I say, in the furnace of affliction, that's when you know mm-hmm. that you're really called. Because mm-hmm. I always say this, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Mm-hmm. And when you're, I feel like right now, we're going to prophesy a minute here, but I feel like there's many of you that are in a real furnace of affliction and you're like, I don't think I can like mm-hmm. hang on any longer. And I hear the Lord saying, tell them to hold on, I'm coming. In your darkest hour, God's brightest light shines and he is shining right now on you. And remember, you are never alone. The Father will never leave you or forsake you, Hebrews 13, 5. He said, I will never leave you. I think for some of you, you're having to cut off maybe areas of ministry. And the Lord is saying, that's okay too. Because when he prunes back, John 15 and 16, 17 goes and talks about the expansion of the pruning and and what that looks like. And I love it. 
you know, because in John 16, it talks about how everyone's engrafted and the pruning back. And, and I just see real clear now what God is doing, like so clear, like that 2020 vision for where mm -hmm. we're at. You can write me anytime with prayer requests or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm always out for anything. Um, but I think that's really critical right now because, you know, you're always going to have the good, the bad and the ugly. You're always going to have people that disagree with you or hate you or call you a witch or, you know, call, call you all these things. But, you know, I've learned something through the years. Mm -hmm. If someone doesn't understand something, how will they ever learn until they have some type of an understanding or a revelation? That's right. That's right. No one believed in Holy Spirit and then Azusa. And you know what? It came mm -hmm. out of a desperation. Yes, I did. believe about the tomb yesterday. I feel like God is saying there's a desperation. Some of you feel the weight of the, of the ministry starting to cave in. And you're going to need all your superhero friends to come and help lift you up in the hour. Mm -hmm. And so what do you sense right now, Leanne? What I sense right now is that we need each other, mm -hmm. and most of all, we need to love one yeah, another, yeah. to walk in faith and not doubt, and mm -hmm. walk in, mm -hmm. you know, love, not hate. And yeah. if we can do that, yeah. then we can fulfill the call that He's called each one of us. We all have been given a call. Yes. We all have been given a destiny, but it's up to us to find out what it is, and Absolutely. it's up to us to get help mm -hmm. when we're down. And I, and yes. I thank you, you know, because... Uh, in the natural realm, I mean, we're so privileged that you came. Mm -hmm. really we just so can't, happy. you know, like, Amen. we really needed you. We needed your yeah. help. And you seen last night the joy that was in here. So many people got set free. Set free. I know. And, uh, that 87-year-old woman, Jesus, God, I could bring her home if I could. <laughs> yes. Praise God. Oh, my Lord. This, I mean... <laughs> Every time she got off the floor, she kept falling. <laughs> she goes, I don't know what's happening. I said, I think that the Lord's not done with you right now. Yeah. And her son's a priest, amazing family. And um, I love mm -hmm. what you said because you know what? For God so loved the world. Mm -hmm. He gave a son for all of us. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be the love of God that transforms. That's why I go into the darkest places mm -hmm. and the darkest, occult, filthiest places. Because I know that God's love transforms and yes. sets free because yes. He did us, you know. Mm -hmm. And we all have a story. But then you have to get to the point where where do you go from the story? Mm -hmm. You know, every day there is a new page waiting. I really believe we're like that 67th epistle. You know, God wants to write a new story mm -hmm. today. Because what you do does echo in eternity. And I just think it's important that as we continue to grow and go and build in the kingdom of God, that he's on the move. Yes, and, he is. And he's mm -hmm. looking, he's, God is seeking the earth to and fro, and he is seeking That's those right. that are looking for him. That's right. And we don't have to beg for crumbs or anything because we've already got these gifts. My job usually, I come in and poof, break through, the anointing hits, and then I just start peeling like an onion a layer at a time, mm -hmm. but then it hits, and then it's all out. And so we had a phenomenal day yesterday, but today we're getting ready to soon to shift. Uh, we have another priest coming in for a time. We'll have lunch and get ready to have a meeting again and do some amazing things. But I would like us to take a minute here. And uh, Dan, I would like you to play a song for us if you would do that, please. Absolutely. Well, Dan, I'm real excited now to hear you play. And um, whatever, what do you have for today? What are you going to play today? I'm thinking to play a song that actually my brother Dom and I wrote together. Okay. It was really cool. We, we were in the Father's house when it yeah. happened. He had received... Um, the verse mm -hmm. and was kind of repeating over and over in his wow. spirit and then i had received the chorus and we were like i don't know how to finish either of these songs so yeah. we just mashed them together into one yeah and uh, i believe that that the people will be blessed it's anointed and Amen. we thank god for it it's called total surrender wow totally surrender oh yeah. play yeah. 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 please and lord we do ask that your holy anointing would come upon us now Give us the grace to surrender. Lay it all down just for you, Lord. For you say there's no greater love than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. You bought me with a great price. You bought me with a great price. Hallelujah. You bought me with a great price. Bought me with a big price. Hallelujah. You bought 
that are like spiritually speaking they're, they're totally broken and a lot of you feel rejection is a big spirit that's come after our generation and it's not always true we haven't always been rejected but we feel rejected and the enemy wants you to feel that way but the Lord is setting people free in our generation right now even as I declare that we are accepted by the Father this generation is rising love of God, to love God and to love others, to fulfill the first commandment. I also declare and see the angels, presence of the angels that are protecting our generation and that worship is rising, that new forms of worship and creativity. I see in the Catholic Church that uh, a spirit of religion is breaking off and people are falling in love with the Lord and rekindling their devotion to Mary and just all the ancient things with the new things, the new Pentecost and the old Pentecost. And Lord, I just ask that if anyone in my generation is listening to this, or I just pray for all those of my generation to arise with that Benjamin anointing. Yes. Oh Lord, to be repairers of the breach, God. Yes. And to walk into these end days, Lord, carrying the light of Christ into the darkest corners just want to release, just be yourself. Be who God made you to be. And you set the world on fire. Thank you, Jesus. You see why 
why everyone is so important. I mean, I'm here to help train and equip, but also to help release understanding. And, you know, God's calling us all to go up higher. And uh, as the lion roars, the eagle will soar. And the eagle will bring light from the throne of God and illuminate it back to the earth. And there's something that's going on right now, even out of Ezekiel, with the ox and the lion and eagle. And man, God is really speaking. I see those four. I want to just said that. But God is really speaking right now to us. And he said, you know, it's really all for one and one for all. It's going to take all of us going in together. And I'm just dropping again every stone of offense and, and misunderstandings. You know, when people look at me, they go, I don't like her, the way she looks, or she looks mean, or she looks whatever. And then when they start to meet me, they go, oh, you're nothing like what I thought you were. And I, I always think, what do you think I was? But see, people can perceive something about someone they don't even know just because they have no understanding. We didn't have Holy Spirit. We didn't understand it. And I want to close with this today. I shared um, a few days ago with the family and with the core team here, because you have an amazing team, amazing man. And uh, I shared about Doubting Thomas. I go, my husband is what I call, he's my Doubting Thomas. And I said, but you know, I believe that Thomas had the greatest faith ever. And you said, well, why is that? And I said, well, I said, because even though Jesus had rose and the disciples married him, they all saw him. He did not see him yet. And so I think like my husband, who would be like Thomas today, and this would be my husband, Larry. Well, maybe they're reacting out of, you know, emotion or they're, they're, in, they're grieving or, or something in the natural that makes sense to me, right? Because there's a lot of minds out there that are like yes. that, that are trying to understand. Yes. But then when he stuck his hand, and he stuck his hand, he knew that it was the Christ. And I feel like there's a lot of you out there like Thomas, and he had great faith. And I'll tell you what, if you don't have faith today and say, you don't get it, I have no faith. Well, if you don't have faith, you're gonna have fear. It's a false evidence that appears real. That's what fear is. Fear comes from the sword, from the father of lies. But God is the father of truth. And he said, have faith. And my girlfriend spells it R-I-S-K. But it really is true. It, that's what we call it, risk. You know, sometimes you have to step out of yourself and go do something maybe you've never done before. But that's the only way you're going to get out of the furnace of affliction. That's the only way you're going to get from going through the valley of the shadow of death and getting to the other side. You know, the mountaintop experiences will tell you are amazing. But can I tell you, I've learned more in my valleys I learned more about myself because when you're by yourself, I was like, God, I am a, years ago, I would just look and go, what a ugly person and you are. And I was like, no, I love people. No, you're still judgmental. No, you have this. No, you have that. And I'll tell you what, them valley times just cleaned me up real quick. It's like being out in the desert. You know, you have to have them separated times because sometimes we can get so caught up in all the amazingness of God that I, I feel honestly, here's the Father. What about me today? <laughs> what about me, you know? Read your Bible, fall back in love with Jesus, get to a great church, go to a great parish, let someone know this week that you love them, they have value, and that they're amazing. You would be surprised, just a little act of kindness. And uh, I really do. I follow the Pope Francis on Instagram. And every, I just read him again this morning. Every day, he has this most simple word. And every day, he has love and compassion and gentleness and forgiveness. And he's new to Instagram. You have to follow him. He's amazing. You will just be enamored by the presence, by the love, it's true. And uh, I just think he's amazing, but so are you. So go have an amazing week. Um, we have to get ready to shift again, but that's what I'm always doing. And I'll be seeing you soon. And Leanne, have you thought about what you'd like to call your channel? Because you're gonna, she's gonna have her own, uh, she's gonna be a host with us on, 
on the channel. Probably heart to heart. That's what I would call it too, heart to heart. And uh, you're going to just be like blown away today, every day, whenever you watch it. Because you are nothing but love, 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 love. I look at you like a like an untapped oil rig if you were in Texas. And it's like, Beverly Hillbillies, there's oil in them damn hills. There's oil in these damn hills. So we love you. We'll see you soon.